Hi, everyone. This is your host, Evan Shapiro, back for another session of Streaming Media Connect 2023. Um, the panel today, uh, the last panel of the day is How Generative AI Will Impact Media Technologies. A great panel, great moderator, great topic. Um, before we get to it, every session, including all the sessions tomorrow, we give away a $50 Amazon gift card to the first person who can name in the chat, both the name of the song and the name of the band of the music that was just playing. You have to be the first person and you have to be here at the end of the panel. Now, everyone's going to stick around for this panel because it's going to be, as I like to say, scintillating. Um, but the first person who can both name the song and the band um, in the chat and is here at the end will get the Amazon gift card. Um, the chat is for just chat, for things like guessing the name of the song in the band, but also for say the link to the YouTube channel where streaming media will be putting all the sessions from Streaming Media Connect next week on YouTube. The link will be in the chat. Um, and also know that you can, you know, you'll see links for the panelists there and other elements of chat. If you want to ask a question, however, put that in the Q&A. That's the Q part of the Q&A. The A part of the Q&A will come at the end when uh, our uh, moderator asks the questions that you've put in the Q&A to our panelists and they give you all the A's you need. Um, uh, with that said, I think I've covered everything here. I want to bring our great moderator to the table, uh, Nadine uh, Krefitz. She's from Reality Software and she's a contributing writer for uh, streaming media. Um, Perfect. Good luck, Nadine. Thank you very much, Evan. And nice to see you and nice that you have joined us on this fascinating trip of streaming technology. Anyhow, uh, let's start off with, um, we've got uh, Jonas, Darcy, George, and CJ on this panel. And I think one of the cool things about this is that not only are we going to be talking about generative AI and how it's impacting media technologies, we've also got another article coming up in the next issue of Streaming Media Magazine on the same topic. So why don't we start off with getting a little bit of an introduction. Uh, Jonas, can you give us a short background on what you do at Globo? Hello, everyone. Uh, many thanks for the invite, Nadine. So basically, I'm the manager of the product team uh, regarding the projects for digital products, digital platform, and advertising. So I'm at the industry for 15 years. And in the last three or five years, we are focused on some AI solutions and study it and apply it to what we have in operation nowadays uh, and focus uh, on our streaming platform that's called Globeplay. Great, perfect. Darcy, I know that you've got a lot in this kind of sphere. Can you give us a little bit of background about what you're doing and also what um, businesses you're involved with? Yeah, sure. I've uh, been doing uh, streaming for more than decades now that I'd like to remember about 27 years, I guess. So along that trajectory, a lot of production, clearly a lot of sports, uh, live type of streaming. And uh, it's always been about the uh, production and the amount of uh, effort and cost that really affects your streaming uh, experiences. And I'm going to talk today a lot about how AI, generative AI, machine learning is helping companies like uh, Barrett Jackson and others to, uh, really, you know, amp up our content and our, our ability to deliver these uh, live streaming experiences uh, using machines to cool. do a lot of the work. Excellent. Okay. Uh, George, George, I, George and I have known each other for quite a while. George, why don't you give us a little bit of introduction to you and Tulix? Hello, everyone. My name is George Popichawa. I'm CEO and CTO of Tulix Systems, which has been working with streaming technology for more than 15 years. We're working on advanced streaming technologies, actually, and recently we start actively using ChatGPT system or generative AI in our developments and our installations. And I just, you know, hope to share with you with our experience. Okay, great. Now, CJ is also our advertising expert. So definitely anytime you have an advertising question, we're going to go to CJ. Why don't you introduce yourself, CJ? Hi everyone! Thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm a I'm a currently a consultant in the media and ad tech space. My background goes back 20 years in broadcast and digital or broadcast and uh, broadcasters and publishers in the digital space. So um, anyone from CBS Local, NBC Universal, on to companies like Telaria, which is now Magnite, the supply side platforms, and all the monetization stack uh, operations. That's been my wheelhouse for the last 10 years, 12 years. 
uh, recently left a video context platform company that was dealing with uh, data partners using artificial intelligence and computer vision to start my own consultancy in operations and ad tech strategy. Perfect. Okay, great. So, you know, one of the things is, is there's a difference, right? There's, there's AI and then there's generative AI. Um, you know, when I went and did a little bit of research, it says AI traditionally analyzes data and tells you what you see. Generative AI uses the same data to create something new. Um, so that's just the level set here. Does anybody else want to add anything in terms of what their interpretation of generative AI is? Or shall yeah, we move on? Uh, yeah, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. The, basically, uh, it, this is what you said. Uh, traditional systems uh, is basically recognizing patterns and make some predictions and generative AI great things. Uh, based in, in a lot of data. So we need to create models, uh, have all these data so we can create something. On the m and industry, maybe you can think about of creating texts for editors so they can have some context about as a opera or movie and, and start to, to uh, write some news. Or you can create images or every... Uh, also audio, uh, synthetic voice or audio, basically based in a lot of data and, and a lot of models. Okay, great. And in fact, l l let me just kind of go around the circle here. I'll, I'll start with CJ and go backwards and ask you guys about what you have seen in terms of a use case in your area of expertise that's using generative AI. CJ, what's been one of the things that you think is the most important thing in the ad tech space? I think one thing right now is, you know, with artificial intelligence, it was something we heard about in the news or it was something that you saw about saw in the movies. I think now with chat GPT and generative AI becoming the buzzword of this year, that it's it's getting into the hands of actual users. And so I know as an ad ops, you know, ad tech professional, there's a, a variety of different uses that one could get into at some point. Most, you know, the most common, I think, example right now is creatives and so forth. We'll get more into that later, but creating different types of, of creatives for different pieces of a campaign, different tactics, ROI. I know as I'm starting out my own business, I've just been using it for content generation in my business, uh, you know, writing bios, helping me with marketing. I'm a one woman band at this point. So, you know, I'm asking it questions like, you know, uh, what languages should I start to try to learn myself to be able to build products upon chat GPT and, and so forth. I even use it in my personal life for things like, you know, funeral cards when you just don't know what to say. Uh, there's very, you know, my father has used it for similar conversations and, um, you know, it's, it's what it's, I kind of liken it to the mouse, you know, training people on the mouse 30 years ago. It's training me on how to speak to, uh, you know, speak to the machine. We talked to Alexa and Siri, you know, there's a way to do that. I think this is kind of the same sort of introduction as Solitaire might have given us to the mouse. Okay, cool. Well, in fact, we'll talk later about kind of talking to ad servers because um, that's one of the things I'm fascinated about. George, how about you? How You know, I know you've been experimenting quite a bit and we talked earlier in the week about some of the stuff you're doing, but what's your favorite thing since I know you've done a lot of stuff right now? Yeah, I think... Uh particular chat GPT or similar systems. It's a, it's a huge, humongous system that I think no one even can realize mm -hmm. how big and powerful system is. So why we have a fear from, you know, on one hand or one side, on the other hand, people are admiring with the capabilities of the system. But this is definitely something which is difficult to realize. Even I'm trying to do it as much as possible, it's still difficult for me to realize that you're talking with an expert, not only in your area, but in area all the rest of your years in the world, which means that it's, you know, usually you don't meet such people. Usually you don't have any source of information like that. You don't have any problem resolver like that and it's the first time in the history of the world in my opinion that something like that, that exists and we're starting utilizing obviously some of us start utilizing the system and um is a multiple level of actually interaction of interactivity with system some people don't interact at all like i know a lot of people especially overseas that they even haven't heard about this system or they haven't tried to use it 
there are people who are using it sort of like a information or like a, almost like an equivalent of search engine or something like that. Let there me interrupt you for who, a second and, and get you to figure out the media technology side of it. Like what would be your favorite thing, you know, in terms of where you think it's been helping you? I, I'm just, I'm counting myself. Like I'm just starting out to utilize the system even I've been using it for many months now. And I'm utilizing up till now as utilizing it as a generator for a lot of tools and tools and systems, which some of them existed before and some of them never existed. Okay. And I can talk about the, the details obviously later on. Sure. Okay. And and I know we're going to talk either about caching or we're going to talk about monitoring from George's perspective. Yeah. yeah um, and actually, there... I'm working on. I'm sorry, a newer oh. project which I'm going to share also with you, which is uh, uh, supposed to generate media in the real time with the okay. help of uh, system. Uh, Darcy, you've got a, a slightly different perspective and use in terms of of use cases for your business. What is your what do you think is the best one that you've identified so far i'll give you two bookends so productivity wise um mm -hmm. you know we have to write tens of thousands of car descriptions every month for our listing service or an auction or you know wherever that those vehicles may appear and that was the heavy lifting a lot of editorial a lot of knowledge you had to have um, or a lot of just a lot of research and we put the research tools the information on every car sold for 50 years everything into our own language model. And now we can generate that editorial uh, in, in seconds. Still needs people because uh, you still need to do some moderation, but as the machines learn more and more, uh, less effort for us so we can scale the business. So ultimately I, we could do a million listings now. And I don't think that would ever have been possible for any number of people before. On the real creative side and the generative, so that's generating more text and editorial on the creative side, being able to put together videos of vehicles and uh, in a meaningful way so it's interesting to an audience and and having talent that's in front of that vehicle that can talk about it and not just having it as pictures on a screen where you're trying to describe something in text we do that all now um you know we've got our talent and our influencers all avatars um we've got scenes for every type of scene a car could ever be in from a racetrack to a cityscape to a, a highway and we can mash all that together with machines with just a little bit of uh, natural language process. Wow. We want this car to be in this background with this person talking about it. And, you know, five minutes later, we have a meaningful, you know, two minute video describing something that would have taken a production team and, you know, a monstrous amount of research again. Um, we, we can do that at scale. So we're actually looking at now, can the listings now be more, much more interactive and mo a lot more rich media? Um, and so now we're doing video backgrounds and avatars can talk and, and actually talk real and mm -hmm. have a, not be scripted. There's so many opportunities for us to, you know, generate content about these beautiful machines that, uh, that come across our world, uh, you know, every day. Okay. Very cool. And I think one of the other interesting things is, is that on this panel, we have people who ha who are working in businesses that are a range of sizes. Now, Globo is a very large company. So, Jonas, you've got probably a huge amount of things to choose from, but what would be your favorite use case? Um, in the beginning, we are trying to use regarding the, the video scaling. Uh, we keep we, we could do this using transcoders in in traditional ways, but using uh, Gen AI, we got uh, better quality, uh, better results. Uh, we also did some something related to auto description and sub subtitling uh, to have more uh, how Darcy said more productive productivity uh, to be more fast in our uh, content uh production but what we are focused right now is regarding the advertising that I'm, I'm sure that i'm going to learn a lot of from cj uh just to build and generate creatives uh using text using some type of context and creating not just images but also uh, video media and regarding the streaming maybe uh during the the streaming of something 
we have a product called digital product placement. So we identified some opportunities of uh, putting uh, a bottle uh, up on the table that maybe can be a water or a beer or soda and have more type of formats for, to, to the publishers so they can impact a lot of people uh, more in a, a, a directed way uh, for each cluster and maybe get this more dynamic. Uh, okay. We are not there right now. We are studying it a lot, but uh, we are trying to uh, bolster and leverage this type of, of, of stuff, uh, gathering a lot of data, gathering a lot of models in just one platform so we can have all these all these uh, analysis running uh, in one center platform so we can give this type of data to each business to use uh, in a better way of what they do, you know. But I believe that the advertisement uh, way of life is going to help us and help all, all the industry to get uh, more results. Okay. Now, in fact, somebody asked in the, in the chat, um, uh, in which area does Gen AI have the most impact from the monetization perspective? So, I, I mean, I think this is both for CJ and Jonas, you know, is it being able to create more versions of something that's important? Is it being able to target? What do you think kind of brings what what value are you guys creating I, either one of you can can kind of look to answering this but the value that you're creating out of your gen ai experience i guess i should or work i think jonas just described several right off the bat i think that's the i don't want to say low-hanging fruit but that creatives there's so much time you know as jonas just described there's so much time spent and time is money and so <laughs> therefore you know if you're not increasing revenue, you're decreasing costs. So I think okay. right now, everyone's going to look at this as how can they decrease costs. But at the same time, as you build products around it, I know, um, you know, there's, there, especially with video and, you know, categorization and so forth, there's companies out there. I just left the company that was working with data partners that were scanning video and then describing what's in that video so that you could contextually target and so forth through, through my prior uh, employer. And I think, um, you know, it's not, I don't have a hard and fast answer to that right now, but I do know that with video specifically being, you know, Dolly 2 and chat GPT, there's the paid version, there's other things you do with scanning video and so forth that, you know, all this data that we don't even realize we have will come into light. And then, you know, companies will, you know, WPP just did a deal with NVIDIA to be able to generate, do, use Gen AI just for creatives. But I think as they they figure out how to take that information about the creatives, pair it with where it ran, what were the users, and ask the machine, you know, ask Gen, a Gen AI engine, you know, what's the best way to get greater outcomes? I think, you know, that will come together over the next few years. Okay. And you know, I also, I, if it, Darcy, for some reason, I, when I just asked that question, I was just thinking of you more on the editorial side. I don't know why. Um, because you actually could answer this question as well. Um, do you want to kind of chime in on kind of whether you're seeing it from an efficiency or from a personalization point of view in terms of what is the biggest benefit for you? Yeah, well, I, as soon as uh, somebody said uh, product placement, I, I jump right to that because mm -hmm. product placement can be, you know, in an editorial. So if somebody wants to come over top of 10,000 stories a week, we can change those stories to actually incorporate that brand okay. yeah, with, with, you know, a couple of text replace uh, prompts. So that's easy. I mean, the tech stuff that I mean, that's sort of water under the bridge, in my opinion, and chat GPT just made it easy for everybody to access it with natural language processing. Now on the creative, on the video or image side, it's been bare because the, you know, unfortunately the language models uh, are generally general. They, Mm -hmm. They go out and try and give you the best representation of what you're asking for, but there's so much that they're looking at that you'll get, you know, with a little prompting and a little more, you get pretty much what you want. But if you try and do it again, it doesn't happen. So trying to replicate things is not as easy on the video uh, and image side. With that said, I mean, literally last week, uh, my journey just came out with 
uh, uh, the ability f to replace parts of a video of, a, of an image. So in terms of if I want to replace something on a table and it's a Coke bottle and now I want a beer bottle uh, or something I in the background, I can put a rope around it and, and tell it what to do and boom, it's replaced in seconds. So you really see that, you know, what used to be a lot of heavy lifting, even for some of these computer vision capabilities for, for product image replacement or those things, uh, AI just made it, you know, a nothing burger. So, okay. um, and then, you know, the last thing behind that is you got to train your own model if you really want the results you're looking for, because if you just work at these open world models, you're going to get kind of the best of what you get. But when you train your own model, like somebody said, WPP probably is, then you're all in on only your stuff. It's only going to be talk about in your tone. It's going to only going to show you your images in whatever versions. Um, it, it, it really, that, that's the next step. And the last AI4 conference I was at a few weeks ago, all the companies there were about training your own language model. So I think that's a thing uh, for sure. Okay. You know, in fact, we're going to, that's definitely one of the questions we're going to talk about. I want to first jump over to George because George is using the open GBT. Um, and so without the kind of proprietary training that's going on. So George, you did, um, you both did a, I, I think a caching system that you developed um, as yeah, well as, sure. um, yeah, please do. Yeah, because there are more stuff coming in and uh, I just share with you is uh, what was going on, including actually today. So we're working in multiple the several areas where service companies, streaming with company, and we have our own resources. I start with number three. Number three, so we have a old time partner who came to our office today and they want to put an autonomous AI system for optical recognition to utilize for, our- For image recognition? For image recognition, video okay. actually, for video recognition. So for all surveillance systems to put in our data centers, GPU based, uh, you know, systems, which will recognize and extract data, metadata, and which will be distributed to multiple locations. Obviously, I cannot talk too much about details, but this is one of area that we're working. As you can see, everything is changing on a daily basis. This is, okay. you know, we didn't hear from this person before yesterday. Yesterday, you know, we got in touch. He asked, can you do that too? And, you know, we, this is like number three. Number two, um, we're working on a very interesting project and I heard about generation of images, backgrounds and all this stuff. But right now we're working with a very interesting startup, which actually allows to do all the stuff real time. Real time means that usually it's so called pre processing, and uh, you're generating all the stuff in advance, and then you know, you, you demonstrate it after that. But now that uh, company actually has tools which allows with a certain specific API to generate video content on the fly. So it didn't exist one second ago, now it exists. So this is, I mean, it may not be one second, but you know, just. Mm -hmm. For sake of example, and yeah, and uh, this is a second project actually that uh, we are working and we're working for about less than one month, let's say. So you can see how this stuff is uh, evolving. This is a new thing, and the oldest one and the main one that I spent probably ninety plus percent of my personal time is a chat GPT's uh, related stuff. Actually, we had several local installation of. Uh, llama models and we went through the whole cycle of installation of the of the uh, ai systems including web scraping including um, you know tuning including quantization and all this kind of stuff but it was just for experiments it was basic production related but what was production related which helped us a lot it's a uh, building software components for streaming infrastructure which is a word important for us because we do provide again streaming services. And let's say if we're talking about caching servers, a number of caching servers and a lot of them are great. They're, you know, they work very well and we're familiar with most of them, at least definitely we stop, you know, three or five of those systems. But they're missing some elements that we needed to do for specific tuning, like uh, an outbreak example. So we build a prototypes of caching system completely based on ChatGPT, which allows us to track down information about each object, cache object, 
in a you know memory or wherever it will be. Right. And this is uh, this is important for us. If it won't be important, we won't be doing that. Most of the system don't allow you to do such kind of granularity. And uh, this is uh, we're talking about the zero, almost zero manual, um, you know, intervention in uh, developing the system. The other is a streaming streaming load balancer. The number of load balancers, and you know, we're familiar with a lot of them. We utilize them in our production for you know almost twenty years or more. But this is streaming related, and I have not find anything like that so far. And it's built with JGPT with zero, zero coding. You may heard or may not heard, you know, the obvious applications are very popular. Uh, streaming applications are very popular. The so-called React native-based um, application, streaming application. And uh, the beauty of React Native is it's so-called multi-platform. So you can do it, you know, you can build once in theory, you can run on multiple cloud, at least iOS and Android. Believe me or not, I build an application in a half a day, streaming-based wow. application. Okay. Uh, streaming service application, half a day, with all the features, which otherwise would take probably at least six months to build. Okay. So now, you know, it sounds like you're creating a whole new business model for yourself, George, because Absolutely. you're able to actually build some tools. I, so one of the things that's fascinating here is that based on having the right questions, you're able to continually work with a system. Exactly. But you also have the expertise in that area. You wouldn't be able to do this if you didn't understand it. Yes, this is, I think, very important. And this is what... Believe me or not, we are struggling even without knowing that we're struggling. More you know, more you can get out, at least from JGPT. I'm not talking about all similar system. I'm not talking about local installations, obviously local installations, local you know, autonomous AI systems. It's a, it's a different, very important story, but it's a different story. But by talking with JGPT, with this huge amount of data, huge amount of knowledge, huge amount of uh, stuff that it could provide you is one of the key component is you have to know and you have to learn and every day you can evolve with you know more how to work with the system because more you know and more you'll be able to um, make it to work for you more results you'll get and this okay. is what I see on my personal experience. Now, somebody has a question, and it's it's more for you, um, George, although you know it could be really anybody. But the question um, comes from Beth Rosen, and she says, when you use AI to generate code, do you still need coders to make it work? In my cases, and I build complete systems, they're still prototypes. They're not like mm -hmm. production. Also, I'm using for testing for maybe a couple of months or some of our systems. The beauty of it, you have to understand the stuff. But right. I didn't use any programmers yet. Obviously, I have to use them for, you know, to put into production and to build much more complicated system. But the system that I built, it was zero problem. But there is a one catch. Just programming is not enough. You have to know operating system, you have to know networking, you have to know a lot. So it's much easier, in my opinion, to build a new product when you are a system architect versus programmer. So programmer, it's a, a lot of help, but just to build your part, to build just your um, component. Mm -hmm. But when it's a, when you're a system architect, you can cover a lot and you can do optimization, which, you know, a lot of uh, programmers, not like don't care, it's a different department which it does. But here, ChatGPT allows you to do it all, as long as you cover all these areas. Okay. Now that's in some of the stuff you're building. We can't necessarily say you don't need a developer, uh, no, but absolutely. you know, the question, you know, that came from the audience is, do you need developers to work with this? Yeah, and... so let me, just quickly, I know I'm sorry I'm using too much time, but uh, so I, um, I can mention that one of the, my recent development was an encryption, mm -hmm. uh, video encryption or DRM or you know, digital right management. So I build a code. I build a code with the system, but I'm not going to implement it because we have 
big large system where that encryption component is just one small component of it. So now actually today I put it into, I send it to our production team and they're gonna implement it to our big systems. But that component I build by myself. With okay. open, not by section of the GPT build, but without okay. programmers, we cannot implement it. It's just not enough. Right. So, so realistically, you're getting components of it. You know how to ask the questions, but there's still a bunch of things that have to happen. Uh, does anybody else want to speak to the, this question, or should we move on? We can move on. Excellent. Uh, so, you know, one of the things we were, Darcy started talking about earlier was training systems. And so realistically, George is working with ChatGPT and you're working with um, both the open and the paid version. Although you said the open version to me was a better tool for you so far right now. Um, which, you know, Jonas, you mentioned to me that you had a lot of specific needs. So what do you have in terms of your data? Are you using open data or are you using uh, your enterprise data? Uh, we are using both, but for the, the major uh, initiatives, we are using open data, but open data, open data has, uh, we need to have a more caution because uh, what is open, uh, all the internet can influence all this data and information and get you to the wrong way. So for this, we have a lot of people to check uh, the outcome, the, the outputs, but I, I believe that uh, not everyone can afford to have private, private data and, mm -hmm. and run all this, all, the, all that, that models. But for some specific uh, uh, workloads that uh, I cannot disclose here, but uh, we are using, we are trying to use the private data and work on it to get a more global perspective of what we are doing and what we are delivering to our, our uh, customers and clients. And regarding uh, the, 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 the last questions about the, how, uh, about the generative AI, uh, how, how can we use it and, and what drives someone to use it? Uh, maybe we had a use case. Uh, we had uh, Cartola. Uh, it's a product, a, a daily fantasy uh, game, and we use it in into a just simple way to have a better result. Uh, I believe that everyone thinks about running a lot of complex systems and a lot of complex workloads, but we had an issue of uh, a, a banner that had a lower uh, viability. So for ads, it's not, it was not working. So when the user was entering on that product, he just scrolled down and didn't see the, the banner. So we developed a text uh, using chat GPT, just focus on that user and with the information and context of that day of their team and of soccer, so he could read it uh, on the top of the page so he could be impacted by the the, the ad banner mm -hmm. and we have a, a better result. So uh, even with, when you have a simple solution, maybe we get a more, uh, a, a best results than you develop a lot of complex things. Okay, we're getting a lot of questions in the chat and I wanna basically get to both the questions as well as some of the things. Let me just continue on in the, um, the, the data use because Darcy started this question off a little while ago. And I mean, Darcy, your whole business though is really you've got this big amount of proprietary data that is running your business, right? It's not something that's on the open internet. Uh, well, you could go find parts of it, but yeah, the majority of, you know, the 50 years of automotive information we have is, is ours. We own it and it, yeah, it does manifest itself in parts of it. You know, we do release some of it because we want people to know the results of auctions. We want them to know, you know, the value of cars in general and how they're going up and down based on, you know, certain years and times. But the, uh, yeah, so having that data, we've always kept our data you know, to ourselves because that, that's part of our competitive advantage. So we it's don't want to be, yeah, we're not out there sharing a lot of it, but the images, you know, the things that we've collected and 
we want to share all of that. I mean, if you if you own a certain type of car or interested in a genre of vehicle, you can now go and get that image and you can mash it up with your favorite background or put it in your in your own background. You know, we want to start creating those capabilities. And that, that just wasn't possible uh, for most humans, uh, unless you were an editor or, you know, or capable of it, but you can just ask AI now to put it together. And suddenly you have something that's interesting, engaging, and was the domain of some production person uh, not that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, training your own model, you know, isn't for everybody. And that's why these open models are great because that's why the whole world knows about uh, what's going on. Uh, we've been doing this stuff for a long time. It used to be the domain of the data scientists and, you know, the geeks like me in the background. And then it became available to everybody all of a sudden. But it's not like it just came out of nowhere. Um, this is machine learning. This is processing. Uh, and the creative side of things, I think, is really just getting started. I don't think anybody has to feel like they're behind in this new world of, of generative AI because it changes every day. Uh, that That feature I mentioned earlier about in image replacement mm -hmm. just came out and now I, every, everybody in the world can do it. I used to be a, a lot of cutting and pasting and fixing, you know, with the stitching and all that. And now the machine just does it for you. So I, I think it opens up for us a lot more opportunity to share our content with others. Um, but it also lets people kind of self uh, moderate things and, and take our, our content in directions we never imagined before. Okay. Now we're getting also a lot of questions about advertising, which you know I know most of you can speak to. So let me try to summarize some of these just so that we don't duplicate things. But the idea is we've got different aspects of, of advertising. We have the operations side of it. We have um, the ability to uh, price in the market. For those of you who are working in advertising, what do you think is the area that is going to be the first to be endorsed because it's an easier lift, essentially. I'll say one thing about ads that I do know: mm -hmm. SEO won't be around. Um, not not necessary with AI. Okay. Um, I'll I'll be bold and say that, and I don't think it's that long away. Um, I know there are already things going on with cookies and you know cookieless world, but uh, honestly, uh, with AI able to kind of deliver you anything that you desire for your experience and personalize it for you, uh, the, the models that are out there now better react quickly because uh, they're about to dissolve. Um, and the companies that have appreciated the revenue from those uh, better figure that out too. Okay. So, you know, uh Okay, we're we're disrupting things on a on a very kind of ongoing basis here. But in terms of the advertising things, you know, there's more activity going on between the chat and the Q and A than almost you know we can actually ever handle here. So realistically, we're we're all humans here. So um, I'll try to get to as many questions as we can. In terms of the advertising question, um, CJ, you know, the operations side is is the efficiency there, or is it more? Do you think will be used on the pricing side of things? I absolutely think that in operations, you'll be utilizing uh, some sort of generative AI for a number of different tasks that have to happen in a campaign. Um, I think another piece that I would love to see, you know, sooner than later is, you know, if you're a large media company, you have all these insights from the ad server, that's, that's a disparate system from the SSPs that you're working in, perhaps you have direct uh, supply side platforms. Perhaps you have direct relationships with the trade desk, so the DSP side. You have all these disparate systems that you're, you know, someone is sitting there in, say, Tableau or Salesforce trying to combine CRM data with delivery data with, you know, campaign creative data. I, you know, when you're one human looking at that, just trying to see if Microsoft delivered, you know, their hundred thousand dollar campaign and hit their KPIs, and was it really, you know, better served on Crackle or was it really better served on you know, the desktop site for, you know, uh, NBC News, right? Like when you're trying to look at all these different insights, my, what I'm most excited about, I'm not thinking it's tomorrow or next week or next year, but as we figure out how to speak to and how to use generative AI, using these disparate data sets, being able to take all that data in a secure place, right? Chat GPT, I would not put real data into that right now. It's that's you know, it's private when you're using the free version. There's some privacy I was reading with, you know, with the paid version. I was debating whether I should get the paid at some point. 
for some of the stuff I'm working on. And um, I'm most excited to see, you know, these hours and hours and days and sleeping under my desk, you know, that the next generation of ad ops professionals are doing more um, higher level thinking, you know, higher level work than just slogging through Excel docs. So that's my personal win there. I think the creative swaps, I, you know, I came a couple of different companies. I was at local now, uh, they're a, uh, an Allen media property. Obviously the weather channel is their cable, pro uh, the cable channel that they have. Um, everyone knows that, right. The, you know, everybody knows the weather channel, right. So they have all this, uh, weather data and then local now came along and they were, you know, they were really doing this themselves internally. Uh, you know, if you want to have lottery numbers, uh, you know, for all the different zip codes, you know, depending on, maybe there's a different background for each of those, uh, you know, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania might have, have one image, but the same lottery numbers as Bucks County, Pennsylvania, right? I mean, it's just a, a random small example, but the weather is, an, you know, obviously zip code data on weather, being able to generate, you know, 30,000 different versions, depending on, you know, what outcomes are going on. That's something that they've been working on. So I think right now, you know, someone mentioned productivity. I think increase in productivity, decrease in time spent on rote tasks. That's that's the first operational, um, whether you're on content or advertising side of this coin, uh, that's the first big win. Um, thereafter, though, I you know bringing all these different data sets together, I'm excited to to be able to speak to better outcomes that make more sense instead of just kind of putting my finger in the air and saying, you know what, based on my gut, you know, I want to be able to say based on my gut and this model that is you know, out there. Okay. That, and that, of course, in the ad operation side and all, which is a side that's bringing the money in. So now Jonas, you also were, were talking earlier, um, but in terms of your use on the advertising side, is it in the efficiency of creating the ads that you think is the most important? Is it in the the consolation or the consolidation of all the data that you're generating? You know, where do you kind of stick the pin in the piece of paper? Okay. Now, I believe that is on the efficiency uh, to have um, more, uh, not that analog operation, but more a digital one. Uh, mm -hmm. On the past for TVs and cables, uh, everyone was checking each ad that is going to uh, be viewed by uh, uh, millions of persons on each break. So when we have um, ad insertion and all the all that segment stuff, you you can't manage all this. You need to have more more digital processes to look at it and to have all these these quality checking and also to create all this type of ads because when you have a lot of segments and now we have a lot of channels, uh, I believe that the US has more than 3000 uh, fast channels. Uh, you, you can't have all that process of, of, of the TVs that we had 50 years ago. You have to, to use and be supported by AI and all the new technology stuff to have more efficiency and save time for more noble things. So you can um, help the, all the company and help the business to, to earn more, more money. And maybe the next step should be uh, looking at the cost, the price, uh, doing some A-B tests, uh, Regarding this, but I believe that first, all companies need to uh, to solve the efficiency part. Okay, you know one of the things, and, and I don't know, Jonas, if this is something that impacts you, but um, in companies that use multiple measurements for their advertising serving, is this going to be a problem for an AI system to handle? Yeah, maybe uh, we we are gonna just make. Uh, protect the AI processes in this type of stuff, just uh, check the viability of the ads, uh, mm -hmm. the, the impressions and so on. So I believe that's a maybe. Uh, I believe that uh, the industry doesn't have the answer. I don't know what's the opinion from CJ Darcy and so on. Okay. CJ, Let you me. want to say anything on measurement? Oh, sorry, George? Ah, go ahead, George. Thank you. Uh, let me just throw in an idea. It could be a good idea, potentially, for a startup. And we're dealing with fast channels. We're running multiple fast channels out of our facilities. But uh, one of the terms is so-called DAI. DI is a dynamic ad insertion. So why don't think about dynamic ad generation? Imagine mm -hmm. you have a company profile. 
and you have a slot in the, you know, wherever in the live stream or wherever you are, you have it and allow for AI to generate the ad dynamically based on market conditions, based on, you know, the latest info, based on whatever is going on in the world. So you won't have any of so imagine the new era at Malik said, this is uh, limitless capabilities. So AI and chat GPT specific and doesn't have to be obviously chat GPT to be any other ones. Limited, we just need to be open-minded and we have to think, I think, completely from a new angle. And this absolutely, whatever I said, is absolutely doable. Like I said, we're working on similar project already. It just okay. takes an idea. It just takes open-mindedness to come up with something like that versus just trying step-by-step -step improving the current probably what tries to, let's say, workflow. Why just don't jump and to the completely next level and completely change the industry and make it much, much more effective? Imagine some things have been generated some time ago before it got into production, right? Before it got to the server before and it's sort of made appropriate disorder, you know, whatever decision, versus AI actually not only, you know, choosing the time when to show it may or may not be possible, but to show and generate the ad, which will be the most appropriate. I can imagine the power of ChatGPT and ChatGPT to generate ad for our company on, you know, on the channel. Okay. Now, in fact, George, we George brought up a point that we were going to talk about, and, and the question was, um, when we were on the planning call, we talked about a bunch of different uses, and we've already been talking about a, a whole range of things, but does anybody here want to kind of speculate on what some of the other potential use cases are that you haven't already covered that might benefit from a generative AI system? helping it or or essentially even leapfrogging streaming to solve a problem that we don't focus on yet. I'll take a shot at one thing. So Thanks. advertising historically and even now is still one way, you know, give you something that we think you're interested in and I'll make you buy my product or be interested mm -hmm. in what I have to offer. Well, what if you can ask uh, the ad questions and, and actually get deeper than what the one minute or 30 seconds that, you know, you, you time you have with it. And that's actually where the most effect is happening today. Cut, I'll call it a customer service bot mm -hmm. based, on, based on the brand and based mm -hmm. on what it knows about you and what it learns about you. It can tell you anything. I'm, in fact, go to my LinkedIn page. I just posted a robot that I programmed last week and it's a customer service robot. It's actually a real robot, not a avatar on a screen. And I can ask it any question in, about our company and it can answer me in real time, talk to me just like we're talking. Wow. So if you can have that ad talk to you like that and react to you and say, hey, I really like your product, but I have a question. And the ad pauses and then answers it. So it's the ad is just the start of a conversation. You can go as deep as you want, as long as, again, the information is available about that product, that company, that, you know what they're trying to sell you. Mm -hmm. That's happening now. And we're going to be using it a lot. We use it. You know, we have to have people standing around when tens of thousands of people are walking around asking questions about cars. Well, a bot can just be there and answer anything you want about it. So that robot that's in my LinkedIn is a thing, and uh, we're programming it to answer questions and uh, and be more engaging. It's not a click through anymore. Uh, the ad is the start of a conversation, and the ad can have a conversation with you, which is really bizarre. That's very interesting. Um, okay, so we find, in fact, you, you've probably brought up the solution to so many of the panels that, that I've been running on advertising. So we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we continue on this topic. Anybody else want to talk about a particular area where they think that you can solve a problem that we haven't talked about yet? Because I can pick one, but CJ? I'm just going to toss out there education. I think someone asked about that, you know, ad ops is a high turnover space. Mm -hmm. Advertising is a high turnover space. You know, if you're in a job more than two years in some of these companies, that's you're you're the oldest person, greatest tenured person there. And so I think as um, you know, I went into the freelance consulting world because I wanted to get a variety of experiences. And I think 
um, as you have people come on and off for projects and so forth, the Gen AI, I just asked it, I'm going to speak at my, where I went to grad school in, in September. And I was just asking it for, to write me up a primer on SSAI. And I asked it a couple of questions and I'm going to obviously, you know, copy edit and so forth, but it gave me the, you know, instead of me sitting here with writer's block with the blank word doc, I've got something to lean against. And if you're in an organization and you have specific processes that you've, you know, documented, but there's if then statements, you know, you're trying to train someone up. I know someone who's going to work for one of the major, uh, uh, CTV device companies, they have, they have a ramp up period before political starts. And, you know, there's a lot of information they're gonna have to pick up on. I think Gen AI will help, you know, in the future with education and, and how do you get that person up to speed quickly um, and maybe take out some of the roadblocks that we've had, you know, previously. So like when you're talking about up to speed, so what are some of the areas that you need to, especially in the ad op side of things that you do Just, need to get up to speed on? If you're, for example, if you have someone who's early career, just mm -hmm. training them on, you know, a lot of the, you know, you, you learn a lot from a pixel not firing. You learn a lot okay. from a campaign not delivering in full, right? Those are some of the pain points that you don't want to learn. Right. You know, uh, if something's not firing six weeks into a campaign. You know, how can you train someone? How can you avoid that with technology in general, right? What are the processes ahead of that person? But how can you get that person up to speed from, you know, walking out of university into a, an early career role and make them productive faster, right? I used to have employees, the first two weeks was always the, you know, you had to, you had to set the tone in the first two weeks, but generally they were not up to speed for a good three to six months, right? Mm -hmm. They couldn't land on their own. What if I could bring that down? Because with generative AI, I've been able to, you know, with my own database and then external da databases, be able to combine, um, you know, these two data sets to, to help someone get up to speed faster. Writing documentation in any organization, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to argue with this. Documentation in any organization is probably 99% of the time terrible. It's it's missing fa facets of the business and so forth. So looking at Gen AI, at how perhaps there's ways to, to alleviate some of the burden from product managers or ops managers that have to draft that, that in and of itself could be a full-time job, whole role, okay. you know, at a company, so. If I sure. may to add also to educational, I think it's absolutely correct. And on one hand, I completely missed even to mention that on the other hand, we have a great experience with uh, working with ChatGPT in education area, specifically on annual day, every year we have interns here, summer interns. And this time uh, when our interns came to our office, ChatGPT uh, not only was introduced, they knew about it before, but we asked them actually intensively to use it for their internship program. Believe me or not, they were able to do 10 to 15 times more than any other interns before. And not because they were great anyway, that we had great interns before too, but only by utilizing ChatGPT we were able, again, and I'm not promoting ChatGPT, just I'm sharing with you as a fact. And I'd like to say specifically, if not ChatGPT as an example for interns, it just didn't make sense to do number of uh, educational elements or subjects because it would take so long. But with ChatGPT, we were able to squeeze it in so short period of time that we were able to present all the topics and they were able to get something which not only was they were able to create systems which actually our company finally will be able to use, like unlike before, we just mostly were educating them on, you know, some stuff. So I think this education is a it's a huge, huge area. And maybe if I'll continue, if I may, a little bit more, it's, I think oh, soon the number of people, uh, or it will be like a new expertise where um, people will be able to match their area of expertise with the requirements of, uh, not requirements, with the ability to make GPT or similar system productive. So, Right now, only people can, who can do that, they're trying some for some people, you know, they can do that for some people, it's more difficult, but at some point of time, and pretty soon, I think, there'll be a number of people whose expertise will be to translate, actually, their area of expertise will be advertisement, will be production, will be, you know, sales, will be marketing, into the uh, activity which allows to maximize output of chat GPT-like systems. Okay. This is what. It, it sounds, so 
what a lot of you guys are doing sounds really very interesting in terms of um, if you guys had, we have a very few minutes left, so um, I'll just go around the circle. And if there's one particular thing that you think of that you are really um, impressed with chat GPT um, and keep this to one sentence, let's see if we can manage to do this. So um, Darcy, I'll put you on the spot and put you first. If there's one thing, one sentence you can think of that describes what you think of as chat GPT, what would it be? I guess I'll say it's my uh, research analyst, my business analyst, and my data analyst, and now my programmer, all wrapped up in a nice little tidy box. Very cool. Uh, CJ, how about you? One sentence, what would you think of as how do you describe what ChatGPT is now really doing for you or the industry? It is my muse and will probably be the source of my next business venture due to how it's going to help, uh, you know, people are asking me how to reduce costs, not necessarily with Gen AI, but that's how I'll probably be able to do that when they have low budgets. Okay, cool. George, one sentence, can you think of something? I know you've you've covered a lot of stuff, but yeah, what would yeah, be the but, real benefit? You know, maybe I'll just rephrase a question or answer into what's, what I would love, what I'm dreaming about is to be able to get results which are unthinkable from JGPT. Unthinkable, okay. Which, yeah, because the system can do something that you can't even imagine. You have just to be able to interact with the system the right way. But what the right way, this is the question. And, but this is my dream, to get something which is... Like I said, at this point, I cannot think about, or probably a lot of people cannot think about. Okay. Jonas, how about one sentence on really what you're thinking? One sentence, cost saving and time server. Time saving as well, because uh, we can automatically do a lot of stuff there. And like Darcy said, uh, it can be my business analyst, data analyst, my programmer, and so on. And I can save more time just to focus on new AI stuff uh, for this new for a new cycle, because generative AI is not that new, but Chat GPT made made it more public. Uh, but we are maybe we can focus on how AI can leverage on this on all this uh, public knowledge and all of this data that we are uh, gathering, so we can move on on this because AI. Right now, we are uh, focused on much more machine learning process. Uh, it doesn't have more critical sense. So we need to to uh, to move on the next step. What is on the next level? We don't know yet. But I believe that is a, a, a time savers and a cost savers so we can invest okay. this to discover it. Unfortunately, we're out of time. And so uh, we will have to continue this conversation um, in the future. Um, Evan is going to take us away and take us back to what he needs to talk about. But thank you all for joining us on the panel. And we've gotten so much questions. Um, if anybody who wants to reach out to me because we're doing an article on the subject next month, please get in touch. You can do that through Streaming Media's website. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. Thank great. You Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, uh, panelists. That was a great panel. I actually asked uh, ChatGPT to write an article in the voice of Evan Shapiro, and it did a, I'm embarrassed to say, a pretty good job. So I was really embarrassed that, that it was able to do that so quickly. Um, thanks for that panel. Uh, thanks for everybody for sticking around uh, in, in uh, on this great panel. And thanks to Luke Wu for sticking around to the end, because you are the winner of our song naming contest. You got Willie uh, Mitchell Groovin. Um, someone from uh, Streaming Media uh, Connect will reach out to you via email to get you that gift card. Luke Wu, thank you very much. Um, and thanks, everybody, for sticking around. Tomorrow, uh, there's a whole day of uh, great panels. Today's panels, yesterday's panels, tomorrow's panels will all be available on the Streaming Media Connect uh, YouTube page. The link is in the chat. Um, tomorrow's panels start at 10 a.m. with uh, bridging the gap between broadcast and streaming tech. Um, and I'm hosting a panel tomorrow with a great uh, group of panelists uh, at 2.30 in the afternoon. I hope to see you there. Thanks for attending all day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, you forgot my panel. There's another one of my panels tomorrow, too. <laughs> Nadine, <is> it, what's <laughs> your panel there? Go ahead. Plug it real quick. Yeah, build or buy. Build there or buy. Go. There build you go. Buy, right okay. before mine, I think. My leader. Thanks very Thanks, much. Thanks, everybody. Okay, take care. Bye.